What's up guys, Chris Schwartz Edmondson here from Schwartz Edmondson Web Design. In today's video, we're going to be looking at customizing the carousel summary block. We are going to be turning its crappy mobile view with two squished items next to each other into an awesome stacked view on mobile where the carousel items stack on top of each other and we're also going to be revealing this view all posts button on the mobile view as well. It's gonna be a good one. So I'm here on my website and on my website I have a summary carousel block that is pulling all of my blog posts onto my homepage. Uh, so I love the way this looks. I like that I can display multiple posts and people can click the arrows to get to more posts. And I, it even looks pretty good to me on tablet too. Not too squished, but I absolutely hate the mobile view. I think it looks awful. Uh, you have two posts next to each other, which makes everything really small and squished. I really like how the rest, uh, like a gallery block, for example, stacks all the images. I think that's a much better layout for mobile um, to have everything, you know, taking up the full width and stacking on top of each other as opposed to trying to get multiple items next to each other. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump in. So the first thing that I want to do is come over to my custom CSS window and I'm going to write a media query. So at media screen... Uh, and, and then I'm going to open up some parentheses, max width 640 pixels. And so whatever CSS that I put within these curly brackets is only going to apply to screen sizes of 640 pixels or less. So basically that's on mobile devices. Uh, okay, so the other thing I want to do is I want to limit any CSS I write to just apply to this section here this index page section. So uh, the ID for this index page section is recent articles. So I'm gonna copy that ID and we target IDs with a hashtag. So hashtag recent articles and I'm gonna open up some more curly brackets. So now whatever CSS I write in here is only going to apply to anything within this section because I wouldn't want this to necessarily apply to all summary blocks on my site. Maybe I want this functionality uh, on another area of my site. Um, so it's just good practice. In this case, I just wanna limit it to this section on my website. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and uh, right click and inspect and we can jump into the HTML uh, and see what the structure of this carousel block looks like. So here we have the summary block and I'm gonna to toggle that open. And we have a wrapper. And here is the uh, another container. And then we have the summary block header and that contains um, the summary heading and then the carousel arrows. So we don't have to worry about that. Uh, what we want is this summary item list this container houses each summary item that is in the carousel. So as I hover over these, you can see these are all of my actual summary item, uh, the blog posts themselves. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to set a display of flex on this parent container, and that will turn each summary item into a flex object, and so it'll make it uh, so that we can position them in different ways. In this case, I want to take them from going horizontal to being stacked uh, one on top of the other. So I'm just going to copy this summary li item list class because that is the class that we're going to target and we're going to give it a display of flex. So now you can see what happens. It took uh, all of the items that were next to each other and then it just uh, squishes them next to each other so they fit within that parent container right here. So obviously that's not what we're going for. I want to change the flex direction and I'm going to give it a flex direction of column. So that way instead of being in a row all the posts are in a column. So now they're stock, uh, stacking on top of each other. But the problem is they're still taking up 50 percent because remember by default uh, each item uh, there were two items visible at the same time so then each item becomes 50% um, so we can see here the default width 
but we want to change each summary item to have a width of 100%. So I'm going to copy that dot summary item class and I'm going to give it a width of 100% and I have to give it an important class. Okay, so now once I resize the frame again, then the images will like reconfigure. Okay, so now all of our items are stacked and we're on the right track. So one thing that I have to take care of right off the bat is that each summary item is just crammed right on top of each other. So I wanna add a little bit of margin bottom to each summary item, just to space them out a little bit. So margin bottom, I'm gonna give it a margin bottom. Let's do like 50 pixels. Now we get a little bit of breathing room. I think that looks nice. Um, so, so this is looking good. The problem is that the arrows are still there, so you can toggle over, but there's no more posts visible. Um, whoops, I double clicked. And um, that's because we've stacked them all on top of each other on just this first slide. So what we'll want to do definitely is hide the arrows and uh, they have a class of summary carousel pager. Um, so I'm just gonna copy that class and we're gonna give it a display of none. Cool. So now you can't um, page over to like additional slides that are blank. Um, because we got rid of the controls. So that's perfect. Um, so now it's looking really good. The problem is I have it set up to have nine posts visible and I don't necessarily want my users to be scrolling down through all nine posts. Um, so I only want like the first three to be visible and then people can click this view all posts link to view the rest of the posts. So how do we hide everything except for the first three posts? Well. There's a really cool method um, using nth child and then in parentheses n plus five, for example. So I'm just gonna Google that and it's gonna take us to this useful nth child recipes from CSS Tricks. So in this article, it talks about how to select everything but the first five elements. And we can use nth child n plus six, and that would select the first five. So what we can do is we can do nth child n plus four, and that will select everything except for the first three elements. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna set a display of none to nth child n plus four. So that will set everything except for the first three blog posts to a display of none. Um, so pretty cool article, definitely CSS Tricks has a lot of really cool stuff uh, that can really help you with your CSS on Squarespace. Okay, so what we are going to do is uh, we are going to target the dot summary items because remember each summary item is a child in this container. So uh, here is the container, summary item list is the container that each of these summary items are contained in. So this is a child, this is a child, this is a child. Each summary item is a child um, and you can also call them siblings of each other, but all of these are children of this common parent container. So we are going to select all children except for the first three. So I'm going to come down below. I'm going to write dot summary item nth child. Open up some parentheses and it's going to be n plus four. So we're selecting everything except for the first three and I'm going to set the display uh, to none. And save that. So now as people scroll down on mobile, they only have the first three uh, available. There we go, cool. 
was just making sure it didn't mess up that image below and it looks like everything is fine so on desktop I get all of my summary carousel items available in their normal carousel format same thing on tablet awesome but then when we come down to mobile I get my first three uh, items stacking on top of each other which is much much better for this mobile layout um, and what we can even do is add a button down here I have it as the head the heading this view all post button but um, if you didn't want to do that you could even just have a button here and then you would only show the button on mobile and you would hide it on um, anything bigger than mobile so let's go ahead I'm, I want to show you guys how to do that because that's a pretty good solution uh, so we're going to come down here. I'm just going to add a button uh, and I'll make it a small button. And this is going to say view all posts and I'll link it to the blog and hit save. Okay, so the reason that I didn't want to view all posts button down here is because uh, I have my call to action button right here and I just don't want this call to action to conflict with my main call to action so that's why I don't have a button on desktop um, but I do want the button on mobile because we're only showing the first three blog posts I think it's nice if people have uh, an ability to view the rest of the posts so what we're gonna do is um, we're going to write another media query, except this time we're going to use a min width media query. So um, I'm just going to write that down below. So down here I'm going to say at media screen and open up my parentheses and then this time min width of 641 pixels. So before we were targeting anything that was 640 pixels or less with max width, with min width, we can target anything over 640 pixels. So what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna target my recent articles section again. And there's a better way, when I post this code, this CSS on my blog for you guys. Um, I'll clean it up a little bit. There's better, cleaner ways to write this, um, but I've already started this way and I don't want to confuse you guys. So uh, I'm just going to forge ahead. So again, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide the button on any screen bigger than uh, 640 pixels. So on screen sizes of 641 pixels and bigger, I want my button block. Oops, accidentally reloaded the frame. I want my button block to be hidden. Okay, and if I right click and inspect button blocks, uh, get a class of button dash block. So that's the class that I'm going to target. So dot button dash block. Open up some curly brackets, display none. Perfect. Oops, and that has to be a colon. Okay, so now on desktop, no button down below. On tablet, no button down below. On mobile, we now have the button down below where people can visit uh, the rest of the blog. All right, guys, hopefully this helps you out. If you agree that the carousel summary block looks like crap on mobile, then feel free to use this CSS. Um, and if this helps you guys out, you know, it does take time to make these videos. If you just throw a little donation my way, that would always be much appreciated. Of course, no pressure on that front. All right, guys, keep creating awesome Squarespace websites. I will see you in the next one.